Hi guys, welcome to the video. This is my solo run of this week's uh, feature Grandmaster Strike, which is Exodus Crash. I'm going to be doing it on an Arc Titan because the Titan's neutral game is just really, really strong with the storm grenades and what have you. Uh, this week's uh, Nightfall weapon is the Mindbender, so an Adept Mindbenders is on offer if you can complete this on Grandmaster. Uh, if you're wondering where the loadout is, because I normally show my loadout at the start of the video, uh, I'm going to have that at the end now. Uh, basically what you can do is you can see the run in action and then you can check out the loadout afterwards to see what I used to, to actually progress this. If you do fancy going to check out the loadout before the video starts, then you can just go straight to the end of the video. It's the last minute and a half of the video will be the loadout. So, Exodus Crash used to be one of the more hated strikes in Destiny, but they've made some tweaks and they changed it maybe twice. And it's not so bad now. I mean, it's a Grandmaster, so it is still going to be difficult. But, I mean, this isn't a uh, Glassway, Light Blade uh, level of difficulty. What you're going to have in this first section, when you first come in, this first section is basically going to be a couple of pikes, which, I mean, they can be highly annoying because they can kill you super quick. But you're going to have a lot of these Vandal Snipers. Knowing where the Snipers are and being able to preempt them so you're, you're ready for them when you turn that corner or where you get down that lane, Snipers are always in the same place. Follow where I'm killing the Snipers and you should be good. Pikes... You have, as soon as you come into the area, we had that first pike. Then we had the pike we just, we killed a minute ago, just on the, behind us to the left. You have that pike to the right that we just killed. And you'll have another pike during the very start of the second set of our arc pulses. So we're still on the first set. And then once we clear these arc pulses, then you're going to have a whole host of, uh, adds to kill making my way up to the second section this is what i class the first section it's one of the most strikes i've got them it's like the introduction almost to the strike now the hardest probably the hardest part about this gm and i'm sure most people will, will agree is the boss room so by this point i guarantee you most people are going to do it the same now, i haven't seen any other runs I normally don't look at any any other runs till I've done my own. Uh, and, well, I only just done this last night. So I haven't checked out what everybody else is using. But I can pretty much guarantee there's going to be a lot of similarities between the runs, weapons, yada yada. Because, well, Linear Fusion Rifle, which we use in Storm Chaser. Scout Rifle, which we use in Tears of Contrition, which is uh, my own recipe. It's my own... F f uh, creative one uh i'm trying to remember what i've got on i i think i've got an enhanced triple tap enhanced uh, explosive payload and limo knock probably going to be the order of the day around around those scout rifle linear fusion rifle bow they're going to be the strength of this uh and 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 the great thing about this and it's something that i i'm going to say the great thing about it is where we're going to do the boss fight we're not really going to be reliant on heavy ammo so i'm not really too bothered uh, how much heavy I drop or don't drop. Quite simple, because the neutral game on the Titan is that strong. Storm grenades are going to be doing a bucket load of work for us. So, as you've seen, that's that's all the kind of enemies in that, that first section. Now we've just got to clear this section up here. So what I'm going to do, I am going to get hit a bit here, but because I want to get my grenade off. Now, the grenade amplifies. Now... I'm pretty sure everybody knows ampl uh, jolts. Sorry, not amplifies. Jolts. I'm pr pretty sure everybody knows what jolt is by now. Uh, it basically chains arc damage between enemies. And that is kind of the strength of this uh, grenade. Is not only, especially on the Titan, only on the Titan, uh, there is an artifact that will allow the, the storm grenade, only the storm grenade, to basically go wandering around the map with within a certain it's not it, it won't go the full length of the map i mean it, it will wander in, in a specific area and it will hunt out enemies and it will chain uh, arc damage between any enemies that are kind of in the same vicinity as the original enemy that you hit i.e jolt now we've got some mods on that kind of help with that if we're going to jolt champions but uh 
the grenades do that much damage, we don't really have to worry too much about uh, chaining electricity off champions, because any enemy hits it will chain, and the storm grenade is just... They've really done a good job with the arc 3.0 for the titan. Uh, I mean, all, all the classes have something, but that storm grenade is just... It's one of the best things I've seen for the titan, if I'm being honest, in a long time. Ever, maybe. So... As you can see, I've got overall grenades on as well. So if push comes to shove and I throw a grenade and the these uh, overload champions are in the right, it, it, you know, if I time it just right, I can kind of chain from Lemon Arc to grenade quite seamlessly. I don't really go after that though, but you can do it. I was just more interested in just, you know, putting, putting good damage down. So another thing that's worthwhile saying about this GM is nearly all of this and it's kind of the way i like to play is done with the game in front of me i don't like playing the game when the game is all around me you know when i'm in i'm, I'm not the biggest fan of especially in stuff like grandmasters i'm not the biggest fan of playing with the ads all around me because although there'll be faster runs they're, they're what i would call high risk high reward yes get it done a little bit faster no problem but your chances of dying increase and i don't like those odds you know i like to do a run that can be repeated time after time after time so this for me i thought was going to be the most difficult part of this strike simply because well i like to play with the game in front of me the game here comes to you there are lots of enemies that will push this plate in front of you and they all do arc, <laughs> and 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 the well, ninety percent of them, trash mobs, all do arc. You can see how much damage arc can cause you because we take fifty percent more arc damage. And I don't have to tell you guys; you guys know exactly what the score is with this. You're basically doing contest mode. And that's what GM is. You're locked twenty-five levels below, uh, taking a, an additional fifty percent arc damage. And at this section, nearly every ad will do arc. Now, overloads. Let's, let's speak a little bit about overloads because we all have problems with them. It doesn't matter what you're doing. Uh, if there are overloads, they can become the the difficult part of of that activity because of keeping them stopped. They will, you know, there there are some out and out glitches when it comes to overloads. There's no denying that. There's no secret sauce to stop any glitching. But what I would suggest, right, and you might see it here, and you might think it's the grenade. Uh, well, you won't because he's going to die. When you stop an overload, there is a period after, because he kind of leans over. It kind of slumps like he's been stunned, like he's been wounded, gut punched, whatever you want to call it. Uh, there is a period after he stands up that if you keep damaging him with an overload weapon, it'll feel like you've stunned him again, but it's only momentarily. If you can do that, he won't re regain his health. But if you don't keep hitting him, then that's when he can regenerate. So it's, it's worthwhile keeping the damage on him. If you start damaging him before you've done that with a weapon that isn't an overload weapon, that's when he'll start teleporting. You know, grenades can do it. Some of them, as I've said, out and out glitchiness. There's nothing else to be, to be said. But that is how you do it most of the time. Now, here we are at the plate section. Now, I, I kind of sometimes don't do it like this. So for repeatability, I, I've took out most of these ads, but this is this is the source. This is the source of this plate encounter. The minute you see ads, get off the plate. Now, if you stay on the plate, you see here we've progressed it to about 9%. We're going to get and up to 50%. We get three waves. And in those three waves, the first wave, we get an overload. Second wave, which is this wave, we'll get another overload. Next time, we just get seven, eight, nine ads, no overload. But if you if you get off the plate and fight the ads individually, then you, you are making your life a oh, hell of a lot easier. You can stay on there and just get it up to 35%, just get all the ads out at the same time. I I am trying trying to do this as if you know, it's uh, putting the. Tra I don't want to say putting the training wheels on, but 
I'm doing this in such a way that that this can be done every time exactly the way I've done it. So I got off the got off the plate at nine percent. Got off the plate at about twenty percent. Now we're going to get off the plate at about thirty-five, somewhere around there. Now we go thirty-seven. We've had a bunch of ads. We won't get another overload. There's just going to be some exploders, a couple of uh, fallen, uh, and and that's going to be all your ads for this until the the the, the fifty. 50, it's 50%, 50 but it's you get off at 51. So that's all your ads for the first wave, the first half of this. At 50%, 50 but as I say, 51 is when you'll come off. You're going to get two barriers and then some exploding shanks. Here we go. We get off at 51. Now, I say 51. I know that seems like I'm being you know, super specific there. If you get off... I've got off at 49 and it gets to 50 and these ads haven't come out. That's why I'm trying to be specific when I'm saying this it's not because I'm overly uh, sensitive about about stuff like that you get off you get these two barriers get some exploders see here I'm, I'm taking out one of them I take out these exploders and now I'm gonna get up to the stairs the reason why is once you get the server so once you get the barriers once you take down a barrier you are now gonna get a whole host of ads including three overloads that will all push the plate. Now you see there, this is where the jolt effect comes in really, really helpful. I am sharing electricity, really damaging electricity to to champions, to ads. You know, I, I, I get the grenade down and uh, yeah, it, it goes to work pretty quickly. So... Once we stop this overload one more time, there we go. Then we'll put the grenade. I'm waiting till I stop him to put the grenade. I know the grenade can stop him, but I don't want to waste that damage when he's not taking as much. And he takes more damage when he's stopped. A lot more damage when he's stopped. So with the additional 25% arc damage, I want to make sure that that all goes on his face. To a degree. So... Also, you'll share the arc damage to all the trash mobs, and you'll clear them pretty quickly. So I'm, I'm, I'm. As you can see, the minute I was, when I was getting them down to a certain point, the overloads, I, I was then using my storm chaser, which is my heavier choice for this. Uh, I have range finder and vorpal on it. Range finder basically gives it a better long range zoom, allowing it to be more accurate. So again, we're going to take down this little barrier. And there we go, there's the barrier down. I'm just going to go and collect a little bit of heavy. There we go, that's, that's as much as we need. That's as much as we can pick up, 19. Now we're in for the second section on this, this plate. And the second section, slightly different to the first. We're still going to get overloads. We're not going to get any barriers. See there, we've stopped that overload at the back. But I stayed on the plate a little bit too long. So I might get another wave of ads. Now I would suggest just going straight up here. You know, and, and down at the, the edges, that wasn't such a great grenade. Down at the edges, that's where you want to put your grenade. Be very careful with these ads because they all do arc. A lot of fallen arc damage coming in. And you'd be, you know, don't play around with this arc damage. Because it's, it's the minute you think you're okay is the minute it kills you. So now we're chaining arc, so we're taking these vandals out as well as doing damage to the overload. Really, really good grenade. And you'll see me do this a few times on this plate. Just a little hop up so I can see over the barriers to see if there's a, a fallen vandal or whatever hiding behind one of the barriers. So again, it kind of works the same way as the first section of the plate, where you'll get three waves and then... The big enemy out here, and you'll see him there, is the big fallen shank, the the, the heavy shank. Uh, so again, now I've I'm running mostly void and arc. I have no solar, but the great thing about the solar grenades is they will chew through his shield, no problem. They make very light work of his of, of the shank shield. Just put another barrier out, and now I'm going to drop a grenade. And the minute I dropped it. He ran quite far away, but the grenade will track the nearest thing to it first. 
So it was tracking the vandals. So it never actually done anything on the shank. So I'm going to get another another bar another barrier up, and now I'm going to call be a grenade right over there. And you'll see now when it starts to happen, just chews through his shield, no problem. And that's how we're going. That's how I decided to take out the shanks. It's not bother with solar for the sake of a couple of enemies. It would have been a waste of of not using something arc or. I'm using them or not because the burn is amazing on overloads and adds as well. Now, again, I said this is like the first encounter, whereas you get basically three waves. So you can see there, I've managed to stop the overload. Now, as long as I can keep a barricade up and stop adds, uh, the, mostly the fallen, uh, the the heavy duty sabers, I can I can stop I can stop them from hitting me. You see there, I have put out a. I'm basically multitasking here. I'm still keeping the overload stopped at the back. I'm allowing the grenade to do its thing. And if I keep putting barricades up because of my my heart of innermost light, uh, coupled with mods, again, you can go to the at the end of the video, you can have a look at the setup. Then I can keep getting those grenades back and keep sticking them on uh, the shank. So we should almost have this overload dead. There he is. Now I can focus on on one of the shanks has lost his shield. I put the, my barrier back up. I want to make sure he doesn't get it back. Lemon arc is great for that because it, it, you know you keep that constant burn on. There's one gone. Take out this exploder. I've got one more. We we'll just toss a grenade down there, and we'll put another barrier up. Now, as you can see there, you've got empowered everything: melee, grenade, barrier. When you, with the Heart of Innermost Light, when you throw one, or put up one ability, it empowers the other ones. Just do a little jump up here, make sure there's nothing out there. We're almost good. There won't be any more adds now when we activate the plate. So when you use your grenade, your your everything gets empowered. And then when you use your second ability, you get more empowerment. So you can kind of chain between your barrier and your grenade. And I also have Bomber on my uh, mark. So when I do put down my barricade, uh, I'm getting a chunk of grenade energy back anyway. So it's all built to the neutral game. It's all built to uh, getting grenades back because massive damage. And they'll also hunt out enemies. And, and especially at the boss, there is going to be at the boss, we are going to have to hunt enemies because they're going to hide. Especially where we're going to be. Uh, so... Here we go again, uh, Arc Pulses, the, the route I'm taking, I always take this route whether I need to or not, because it's the time where you think, oh no, I'm cool, I'll just go right through the centre, is when all the pikes will descend upon you. So if, I, if ever I'm running people through this, I tell them to just go and I'll take care of these, because this route is fail safe. <laughs> I just realised it fail safe. Okay, it was a bad joke, but... It wasn't meant to be a joke. It is a fail-safe method. So we're almost at the boss. Nothing should really stop our, our uh, progression to the boss. And then once you get to the boss, if you do it the way I'm doing it, there should be nothing stopping you from beating the boss. So when we, I always go over to this side and I back all the way over because you've always got a couple of these little guys up here. Now while the, you can see I got, see I got hit by that fallen ship. It, he will start firing re relentlessly every every couple of seconds once he starts to go away, right? So I come up here, and what I do is I put my grenade on, on the, the tank, and then I just focus one leg of the tank, and it normally takes me two or three shots once I've thrown a grenade, and I just reload. I put the whole thing into him, this whole clip. And you see there, it's about, you know, it's 80-odd 80 thousand, 84,000, 85,000. We almost got him killed, so now I've, I've threw a grenade. I'm going to reload, and it should be one, one or two hits from the, the linear. And there you go, walk us down. Now it's just these ads inside, and then we're good. We are all gold. The hardest part actually is coming up, and it's 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 such a it's such a ridiculous part, but it's the hardest consistent part to get i'm going to try and make it i'm going to try and simplify for you guys but uh so 
when, once we get in here, I always try and shoot these exploding barrels because it takes a bunch of the ads out. Now I'll throw my grenade, put a barrier up, you see how much damage. It's crazy damage. And 25% additional, but those storm grenades, even without the burn, are very good. Always check around the left, just make sure there isn't a, an ad just hiding or waiting. Uh, and what I've noticed is the fast, I don't I don't know if it's, I was going to say the faster you do it, I'm not sure if it's linked to time. Sometimes you're going to have ads just sitting up there waiting to shoot you. So I jump up here and I can see most of the ads in front of me. I've got the high ground, makes it more, more easier for me to hit them, more difficult for them to hit me. So there's another ad up there, we can't get a shot on them. Uh, and then I can see the sniper. It took me a couple of shots to be able to pop him in the head from over here. And the burn is affecting the other wretches that are there. And there we go. The resilient vandal is down. We know there's another ad there because we could, we could see the burn. And there's the wretch, the ad that was hiding over there. Now there might still be a sniper up to the left. You've got to be very careful. Can't see him. Well, there he goes there, but we're not really too bald about him shoot that and then we're now we're at the most difficult part this is the boss room but the, the most difficult part is getting into position for where we're going to actually attack the boss right so one shot from them one arc if you get it the the the, the perfect charge I'm just going to take this we're going to leave one up leave one of the exploders up you have to touch this base you have to come down here to the boss area right because if you don't it, it, once you kill the last exploder, it won't start the encounter. So leave one exploder up, land on the floor, and then jump up, back up using the way I went. Now, you've got to get up on top of this. So what you want to do is kind of see how I'm sliding back down. There's a part here where you can get to. All right? I'm just making sure I'm as high as I can be. And then you've got to jump up and round the side. Then up again, and then over to that box. Now, if you don't come over at the box when you start the encounter, if you're up on top of the where we just jumped from, then the game will get, you'll get joining allies. Whereas up here, you won't. And as you'll see here, you can see him top left. Now the boss is going to come out. Now, this is, uh, is it, can you really call it a cheese spot? Because you can still get hit. You know, you can see the shots coming up. They're not landing too often, but you will see they will land. Eventually, I'll start taking a little bit of damage. If the snipers target you, you can be in trouble. Now, you can see, because I was hitting him with Lemon Arc, he was still taking burn damage, so I could track him the minute he came back to the area. Now, he's, because I'm staying more at the left of this, the center of this box, well, the right-hand side, but I'm closer to the middle, he's now came to the mid. Now, if he'd have came far right, he might have ran to the right-hand side. Uh, but I've noticed he comes kind of to where you are. If I stand over here and he comes out, he might run over to the right-hand side. So now, we've got to take out the rest of the ads. I don't touch the exploding shanks, and there is a reason for that. I don't touch them because I don't know if I've killed all the ads. Right? I will only know that once they're all dead. And then all the shanks will explode. Now, I'm throwing a grenade down there, you can see it's chaining, it's following ads. And then all the shanks exploded because I've killed them all. Now, the boss is going to come back out. You're also going to get two barriers. Now, I have had, I've had three here, I think, before. So, again, we're targeting them with Lemon Arc, but we're putting the grenade on them, which will chain electricity to anything that runs past them. And because it's Arc, that can be pretty punishing for uh, whatever ad it's getting chained to. You see the boss there? Boss is still there. There's a, there's a Vandal. Boss is still there. So I'm going to put Barricade up, which, as you can see, gives me a chunk of grenade back. But also, I'm getting my recharge on the grenade speeds right up. So now I'm just chaining lightning. Anything, any ads that aren't protected by the shank could be in for a bad day. Because that chain and electricity does a, a whole host of damage. Now, it's us and two barriers, right? Now, I, I have had three barriers before. And I think, be very careful. You see what I've done there? I've seen a ton of people do this. Where they've, they, you just get locked into walking forward. 
don't. You need to kind of keep your finger off your movement stick or whatever you use to move. If you're on PC, you might, you know, have whatever key it is to move forward, keep off that. Because you don't want to get to the point where you slip off this box because then you're in real trouble. I'm just chaining a bit of electricity to any ads around there. You see that took a vandal. And because the grenade's down, the the, the barrier... I'll just put a bar barricade up on my own. The barrier won't come back there because he will... Uh, I mean, obviously barriers have a new teleportation ability. I'll just throw a grenade down there. I threw it slightly to the right to see if it would chain to any of the other ads that were there as well. Break his shield. See there, I'm chaining electricity to one of the ads that's there. And I'll just change back. You've got to be careful. Don't spend... If you're changing off your barrier, whatever weapon it is you're using for barrier, if you're changing off it, you have to be make sure that you don't stay... You know... You don't get a lot of time, really, to... Uh, to make sure that you're... I'm just going to throw a grenade down here. Because so, if I hit one with them or not, they'll all run away. You don't get a lot of time. Once you break a barrier shield... We'll take him so... Try and take him so the grenade goes the other way. You don't get a lot of time to switch to another weapon. Damage a barrier. Then get back to your primary weapon. Because unless you've got auto-load and holster on your scout rifle. What you're really going to be wanting to be, to be doing. Is breaking the barrier. And then reloading. And then if you switch to another weapon, you maybe get one or two shots off. You have to make sure you go back to your barrier before they start to reshield. Because if you don't, they could reshield and get most of their health back. And then it's just you've wasted am ammunition. So I've thrown a grenade there. That'll take... I did see a vandal there. Hopefully it takes the vandal and follows anything else. But it didn't because that was the last ad. Because we got that flash on our screen to let us know big boss man is back now this is where it gets interesting because the boss now most of the time will run to below where you are now the reason i threw that where i threw it is because i want to make sure that there's no uh, exploder shanks anywhere near where i'm going to be throwing grenades because uh, those electrified chunks, because if, if there are, then the grenade will track them. So I, I know now the boss is not on the right hand side, right? But I don't know if there's any other ads. As you can see, there is a load of ads, and the boss was there. See, see all those, all that chaining. Now, the boss, I know where the boss has gone because he'll only in these situations, he, he'll only ever go hard left, hard right. Now, when we go over to the right, now, be very careful. You see how I'm being really careful to kind of stay as tight to the to the left-hand side as possible. Now, what you can do is what I've done. I would do it the other way, but you can do it the way I've just done it there. I would throw the grenade first, then tag with Lemonok. And he'll just keep going between these two sections, right? There he is there. So, I'm waiting for my grenade. He's, he's, he's not running yet. And I'll just toss a grenade. And then try and get something on him. A little burn. He's disappeared. But because I hit him, I know exactly where he's coming from. So I'm just going to put a couple of more shots on him. And he's burning all the time. Now we know he's on, on that side. Probably he's got about two more grenades worth of damage left. And that, that is basically the strength of it. Just keep creeping from side to side. Use the, the grenade will hunt out any enemies. So a grenade. And then put it on them. See, I, I'm managing to just stick a couple of shots here. He's got very little left. The next grenade will kill him. And as I say, inch your way past this bit here. Just kind of crouch. Stay as close to that center part as you can. And this will be the last grenade. And then you will have your GM. You can do this solo. You can do it with a fire team. I have took other people up here. Uh, Mindbenders, as I've already said, is the Nightfall weapon. Uh, the Adept version. Exotics. Golf balls. The whole lot. 
And that is it, guys. That is the solo GM for this week. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, right after I finish the commentary, we'll have the, the loadout. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, some of you will know I have took a bit of a break. I am back, feeling better than ever. And there'll be much more runs to come. Thanks a lot, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. And I will see you guys in the next one.